While researching one story, I stumbled upon another. In this episode, I dig up one of my greatest finds, but didn't know it until I posted it to the Facebook forum, ID Me. Stay tuned to the story behind the find. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Appalachian History Detectives. I am here on site, and I am here on a research mission. Where I'm at, I'm looking for a Revolutionary War Patriots homestead site. According to written publication books, here where I'm at, right here, is where his house stood. However... The family that he has that are still descendants of his that live in the area says, tell me that his house did not stand right here. In fact, he's he's buried miles from here. And you're going to see, hopefully you're going to see where he's buried in an upcoming video. I'm seeking permission from the landowner to go onto their property to take photographs of this uh, cemetery. Um, and it's, right now I haven't been successful in that endeavor. Right here behind me. You're going to see there's a lot of property. I'm going to do a full pan so you see what I'm having to detect around. There's a house up here, a trailer. There's a barn back here. This barn was built in the 1830s. And, uh, of course, there's some, you know, vehicles. But this used to be an old hotel. 1900s. And according to the book that I read, the chimney pile of the house stood behind this hotel the owner has given me full reign of all the land to look for this place so i'm going to be looking all over this property here i don't know where to begin at i'm going to look for high areas where a cabin could have stood i don't even know if i'm going to get a video out of this the gentleman's name i'm looking for his name is christopher sloanacre here's a little bit of a backstory of christopher sloanacre Christopher Sloanacre was in the Pennsylvania militia, and he had a couple buddies of his. One of those was Peter Hover. Peter Hover and Chris were both Quakers, and they were pacifists, and they did not believe in killing or fighting. And they were mustered into the militia in Pennsylvania, and, uh, and they, they actually fled. They left their unit, they fled. Uh, they came down through Maryland, crossed the Potomac River in the wintertime while there was ice across the river. And they settled here in Virginia on a place called Timber Ridge. This is about 1776 to 1780 in that time period. Um, I did a video already on Peter Hover. Peter Hover changed his name to Peter Oates to avoid detection by authorities. Christopher Sloanacre never did change his name. I've got a number of videos coming up with the Sloanacres. A number of them fought in the Civil War as Confederates. And uh, all were patriots of some battle, some were clear up through World War II. We're going to do, I'm going to do stories on all of these uh, people, their families and their, and their uh, cabins. You're going to see all this. But today, enough of my chit-chat. I just wanted to let you guys know that part of history hunting is research and going out and verifying whether history actually is there. 
Today we're going to do that. I don't know if I'm going to find anything. And what I do find may not be related to this site or this gentleman. It could be completely unrelated. It could be related to this hotel up here. So I'm fine if I find coins. I'm fine if I find buttons. I'm fine if I find anything that's brassy and an artifact. And if you guys stick with me, you'll see exactly what I find too. All right, let's get started. All right, you guys, I always film my first plug and it's reading a 29 to a 31. Let me fix the camera here. You guys are kind of awkward there. I haven't looked at it yet. I'm actually heading my way. I'm just gonna let you know, I'm heading up to the barn right there. And this area here looks flat. So I'm hopeful that this could be a place where a cabin stood. So, but this here signal was just too high to ignore. Okay, it is, all right, it's trashy, it's junk, and it's probably from that power pole right there. So we're gonna, we're gonna put that in the bag, and we're gonna keep moving. Okay, so I've come from my truck, I made it to the top up here. The, the ground is real chattery in here. Um, you can see like a fire ring right there. And uh, I've already dug a piece of aluminum can, a whole can actually. And uh, I don't have a lot of hopes for this site. I'm gonna dig a few signals here. And if it's just trash, I'm gonna move on. I do believe something stood here though, because you can see the ground is level here and then it drops off. And it goes this way and it drops off. So I think there could have been a building that stood here and it looked out over this valley right here. Um, so I'm gonna continue to look in here. I'll let you guys see this dig. You can hear that, 16 to 18, right here. And uh, the ground is still frozen. All right, all right, let's see. Let's see if we got her. All right, there's something in here. There's something in here. All right. So it's right over here. Yep. Okay, so this looks just like aluminum trash. Not a good sign. And I will not bring you guys back until I find something that is not aluminum. I've been detecting all through here so far, right here behind me, and all I have found is aluminum. So what I have done is I come down here closer to the highway, and it looks to me like there could have sat a building right here. And so the first hit I hit, I decided to dig, and it was deep, and I'll let you take a look at it. I haven't seen it. All I can see is roundness there, and it actually looks like it could be a key, which would be really cool. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, look at that. You know what, how old is this? Oh, that is awesome. That is a good sign right there. Could this be his house site? Could this be the Saloon Acre house site right here? That's an old skeleton key. And that is a great find. So what I want to do is I want to take it nice and slow through here. And I'm going to see if I can't find things from the late 1700s, early 1800s. I do not know what time frame this comes from. So if you guys know... You know, please comment. Let me know. You can be a part of this search too. All right, let's keep going. Shallow hole. I wanted to come down through here. I think a house actually stood right here. In fact, you can see how it goes out this way, back this way, back this way. And another one up there, 
This is a really old fashioned hotel. It could be from that. There could have been buildings here associated with that hotel. But I think I found a button and I think it's old. All right, pulled the plug, popped it out. I split it up, the ground is frozen. But as I was breaking it up, right over here I saw something round. I saw something round and this looks like a button. So is this 1700s? Let me pull my, is this 1700s? Definitely is a button. It is a fancy button. It looks like a two-piece button. It looks like there's a design right there. You see that? Let me clean this up a little bit and I'll bring it right back. All right, you guys, I cleaned the button up. It looks like it is a two-piece button. You can see the fancy on there. It does not have the shank. The shank's been tore off. But you can see that. It's very beautiful. And the, uh, the landowner came over and talked to me, and he told me that his son used to garden right here. So a lot of what I thought could have been where the foundation of the house stood is actually the edge of the garden. And he said his son plowed real deep in here. He came over while I dug this up. He was shocked that I found this. And I showed him the key that you guys have already seen. And I told him, I said, if this is not Chris Sloanacre's house site, it's going to be another pioneer and it'll be another story. All right, you guys, I just popped the plug. I'll let you hear it. It's in here. <laughs> Sounds like it's right in here. I just dug that button right there. Maybe this is another button. It's about the same reading on my detector. It's running a 1718. I'm gonna set you guys up so you can watch. Okay. Right there it is. Okay. What is this? It's heavy. Feels like pewter. Feels like pewter, which would be good. That's what it is. It's pewter. Is it a pewter button? Look at that. Okay. You can see that this has been melted. See that? See that pattern right there? That looks like it was melted onto the earth. It's very brittle. Actually, it could be, it could actually be something. Look at that. All right, I don't know what this is, but it is pewter. That's in the time period we're looking for. I'll let you guys listen to how... Can you, can you hear how noisy it is? Lots of chips and chirps. A lot of iron in the ground. All right, you guys, it rang up a 17. I'll let you listen to it. Sounds good. Not that deep, not even hand, not even fingers deep. I pulled it out. I can see it right there. You see that? All right. Let's see what this is. Be careful, I don't want to break it. The ground is frozen, so it's frozen right in there. Here, let me uh, set you guys up. Okay, what is it? 
it's fancy. Yeah. It's old. Again, this is, this feels like pewter. This is not iron. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I have no clue what this is. I mean, it looks like it's off of a piece of furniture, maybe? Or a locket, a lock set? You see that? It's beautiful. That's a great find. You can see a hole right here where it attached to something, but do you see that design? And it could be brass, but because I do not see any green patina on that, and it has that same pewter look and feel to me, I think that is old. I think that's going to be a great find. All right. I think there definitely was a house here. And I think... I think if we keep finding stuff like this... And I'd love to find a coin to be able to date it. But even if not, I'm, I'm tickled to death to find this kind of stuff. And that's why we history hunt. No clue. Other than reading a book. No clue that anything sat here. And the landowner was shocked to learn when he saw what I have already found. Couldn't believe it. Let's keep going, we're gonna find more of that. All right, you guys, I can't do live digs because this highway is just so busy. You can see the cars, you can probably hear them. Um, but I had a 13 here. And it's in there. So I'm looking for anything that's brass because it's in that range okay i see it you guys see it right there what is it it is a what is it it's definitely brass Like it folds over, you see that? See how that hole right is? That hole right there? And there is another hole right over here. I'm not gonna bend it over because I don't wanna snap it. But let me get my toothpick and clean this out. And uh, let's see what this is. You know, this almost looks like a key lock. But I know that's not what it is. You see that? It's brass. It's old. All right, let's keep going. All right, pop the plug. I don't know if it's old or not, but I see it. You see it? it looks like it could be a brass buckle, and it is a brass buckle. Never seen anything quite like that. Looks like it might have some silver wash on it right there all right that's a great find but it is brass actually you can see the green patina on there and i do believe it is a buckle i just don't know what of of what age but that's a great find I've been pulling on a lot of can out here, a lot of aluminum, but I found a button. It's a two-piece button. Could it be military? Let's take a look. There's the hole. It's right there. It's right there. It is. Let me, uh, let me get out my brush. Let me set you guys up. Okay. 
There is a design on it, but I cannot tell if it is a military button. Yeah, I don't know. It's got that look. I can't tell if that's a military button or not. I will uh, take that home. I'll let that dry. And when it dries, we'll come back and we'll take a look at that. But that's a great find. All right. Let's keep going. The first of Georgia, due to their terms of service being almost over, was ordered to Tennessee and then to Georgia to turn in their arms and muster out. General Loring, with three brigades, which included the first of Georgia, was ordered to Winchester, Virginia to work in concert with General Thomas Stonewall Jackson's Valley Army. Jackson's army prepared to advance on the village of Romney, which he saw as a strategic position that must be taken and held. The weather, which was clear and warm at the beginning of the march, rapidly deteriorated, with temperatures dropping and snow and ice falling on the lightly clad troops. The Georgians, along with the rest of Loring's army, foolishly cast aside their overcoats at the beginning of the march and placed them in the supply wagon, now far in the rear. The Georgians were forced to bivouac in the frozen fields. Rather than take Romney, halfway through the journey, Jackson turned his forces north to take Bath, Virginia, now Berkeley Springs, West Virginia. Heavy snow, freezing temps, supply wagons stuck 12 miles behind. The forward advancing troops spelled disaster for the Confederates. Even though they pushed the Federals out of Bath, Virginia, it came at a terrible cost. According to Private Sam Watkins in his memoirs, who was sent out on early Sunday morning to relieve the first Georgia's picket post, what he found upon reaching the sentry camp horrified him. He states, I cannot tell the facts as I desire to, but when we went to that place that we were ordered to go to, and when we arrived there, we found the guard sure enough. There were just 11 of them. Some were sitting down and some were lying down, but each and every one was as cold and frozen as the icicles that hung from their hands and faces and clothing, dead. Two of them, a little in advance of the others, were standing with their guns in their hands, as cold, as hard, and frozen as a monument of marble, standing sentinel with loaded guns in their frozen hands. Major Anderson, commanding officer of the 1st, signed the petition to withdraw from Romney, which was also signed by General Loring and sent to President Jefferson Davis and Secretary of War Judah Benjamin, directing Jackson to withdraw, who did so under protest, and offered his resignation from the Army. The remaining Georgia 1st was mustered out on March 9th becoming the only one-year regiment from Georgia to be released from service.
This button, an early Georgia overcoat button, found at or near the strategic turning point from the road to Romney towards the road of Bath. Is it from the first of Georgia? Could be. guys I'm gonna call it the day I don't know if you can see behind me but it is starting to snow and we're caught they're calling actually for um, you know three to five inches of snow and I still got a good ways to drive back home and uh, so I'm just gonna quit today I do not believe I found Christopher Sloniker's house site I don't I do think that there is a house site here and I think the things that you're going to see that I found will indicate that. And uh, I don't know if I should come back. If you guys think I should come back, let me know. We'll come back. I did not hit the vast majority of this property. I just hit one little concentrated area, and I'll show you what I found. Okay, so a lot of junk to begin with. I mean, I've tons of junk. And this is only a fraction of it. The, the owner has... A trash can down there and I left a lot of it down there but uh, some things here you've seen some things you have not um, I of course you saw me dig this uh, beautiful key out of the ground uh, you did not see me dig that handle or I think that might be a piece of lead off of the end of a nail that's on a roof you saw me dig this up I think this is melted pewter here could be wrong I found one two buttons I found two dimes I do not know if they're silver yet or not I found a piece of pewter a piece of brass and I do not know if this is brass or pewter yet or not I got to clean that up it is a pretty piece I'm happy that I found it and overall I was only here for maybe two hours find all this in two hours I'm, I'm pretty pleased this probably will be a short video because the the day was just so short um, my dig time here was just so short